This blue gleam will make some shaman happy. Blue gleam.
You know, I kind of missed all this red dust. Well, there's our Stormbird. When you're ready, I'll follow up and boom. Got that part you need. Perfect. Already got machine oil on my hands. Here it is. One Stormbird Talon. <laughs> Let's do it. I haven't had this much fun in ages. Watch and learn, Aloy. Only don't stare directly at the sparks. <clears throat> okay, so I pretty much had to break her in half. But what's a staff? A stick. One thing I like about sticks, you can put them back together however you want. Which you did. This thing looks a whole lot more dangerous. She's better than dangerous. She's a genuine Varja special now. Take good care of her. What you did to that storm slinger? That was some impressive work, Varja. Hey, it's nothing. I just helped her become what she was always meant to be. They grow up so fast. If I find anything I think you'd like, I'll be back around. You better. Peace and harmony, my friend. My Len has returned. I expect you have something to say about this. I do. Then convince me what an outlander's word is worth. If this was a test of her endurance, I'd say she's endured more than many could bear. She put your Werak above all else. That was what kept her going, through the pain. And through the loss of a friend. She survived for you. Don't turn her away. She is a fine teller. There is a place for my land with the white teeth. I do not dispute it. Outlander. So nothing of the other hunter? The one called Ikri? She's... gone. She sounded brave. Her name... Will always be in my song. None of the southern tribes rival the Some
Is this what you- Hush, hush. A shaman's secrets are not spoken aloud. Is this what you wanted me to find? Bind it to your spear. Use it to attach this for now. You'll find more, I'm sure. Why are you helping me? The blue light is fading. The machine songs are ending. And, and what does the conclave do? They sit, they chant, they observe. No more. We must fight for it. And you? You are a fighter. We share a cause. I'm not sure we do. I'm not even sure what the cause is. But I'm grateful. No need for thanks. Only action. Now I can attach modification parts to my spear. Works for me. Might as well get started improving my spear. People have been telling tales of your accomplishments. Seems you have taken a special interest in our stretch of snow, Outlander. Yes. And apparently this is the only way I'll get to see all of it. Is this a challenge? For the Warrack. You? <laughs> this must be a joke. It is not a joke, Eratok. The Outlander's your pawn. And with you backing her claim, I have no choice but to accept. I expected better of you, sister. It was you who forbid me from Thunder's drum, brother. Brother and sister? This is a little more complicated than I thought. No, it's simple. You will meet me at the Frost Figures. And I'll put a quick end to this mockery. I suppose I owe you an explanation. Yeah. I suppose you do. So why didn't you tell me that you and Aratok are siblings? I thought I wouldn't have to. I'm surprised Aratok brought it up in front of a stranger. He must be very angry. Not always the best judge of people. I prefer the company of spirits. They're simply my own. I didn't want you to think of our pilgrimage as some sort of family squabble. It's much more important than that. It's bold, I'll give you that. Going after your own brother. He gave me no choice. He thinks I'm a child to be shoved to the back of the hunt. He would forbid me from my destiny. And yet, Part of me did it knowing he would forgive me, eventually. He always does. Family drama aside, what's this challenge meant to be anyway? You and Aratok will hunt machines with the Frost figures. The victor will be the fastest. It won't be easy. Nothing about this has been so far. When you meet us at the starting point, I'll tell you more. It will be simpler to explain from the base of the hills. Aurea, it's not about who's related to who. I want to know what's inside Thunder's drum. The spirit, the daemon, and how it all connects to the machines. But if we're gonna go through with this, I need you to be straight with me. I... underestimated you. And Aratak. I won't make that mistake again. See you at the Frost figures, then. So, off to risk my life in order to take charge of the new hunting band. Just what I always wanted. I figured... Here I come. 
We are fortunate that a ray of favor. Come, hey Lord. A little business arrangement. What can I do for you, Burgrind? Mourn my poor departed luck. I finally met some Banuk keen to trade with Outlanders. Then they up and vanished. Three Banuk hunters. Rolled in a few days ago. No provisions, junk equipment, no idea how to strip a machine for parts. Asked me to outfit them for a long trip. And you know me, Aloy. I'm sentimental. So I did it on credit. And they haven't paid. Well, they tried. Just look what they did to this Thunderjaw heart. But that was ages ago. And I'm starting to worry about them. What do you mean they couldn't harvest parts? Not uncommon with Banuk. That's shaman's work, you see. The hunters take down the machine. The shamans slice them up. No shaman with these three. Just two youngsters sniping at each other. And that big fella standing there smiling. So if the Banuk don't usually hunt without a shaman, what's the story with these three? Mm, they weren't telling. But hammer to steel is not a happy story. Whatever it is. Tell me, Burgrind, are you worried about their well-being or your purse strings? A man can worry about two things. Uh-huh. What kind of deal was this, really? Just what I said. I was nothing but generous, Aloy. After they dropped this ruined heart at my feet, I even gave them another chance. Sent them to fetch a few other parts I need. But you haven't seen them since. <laughs> Hide nor hair. You said they asked you to outfit them for a trip. A trip to where? Not sure. But I heard them chattering about the Sundom when they thought I wasn't listening. So they're leaving Banuk territory. Sensible behavior. Still, I get the sense this wasn't a sightseeing trip. They're running from something. I'm not a debt collector, Burgrind. If I look for them, it'll be to make sure they're all right. Of course, of course! Fires of the Forge, forgive me. I actually like these idiots. The molten steel of youth and all that. But uh, if you do manage to find them, you could remind them of the deal we made. <laughs> a scorcher claw, a loop of sinew from a stalker, and a snap morphine. If they bring me those parts, their debt's paid. And then some. Just make sure they don't bust them up too badly. I'll consider it. Last I saw them, they were heading northeast. Good machine hunting up that way. If you decide they're worth the trouble, you might look for them there. Something tells me those are Berggren's missing hunters. I don't suppose you three know an Osram and Song's edge called Burgrin, do you? <laughs> Boys! That con artist sent an errand girl to collect what's owed to him. I'm nobody's errand girl. Burgrin asked me to help harvest parts. Or would you rather keep trying to sell him broken junk? Broken junk? This pack will be on the move soon. No time to argue. If she's offering to help, we should accept it. Fine. We're about to take down these machines. If you're so eager to help, then lead the way! The Banuk might find this glue glue stuff valuable.
especially when I talk about our deep That's done. You three are pretty handy in a fight. <laughs> Thanks, I guess. Not that we needed your help. We are doing just fine without you. That's not the way Bergren tells it. He says you tried to settle up with him using a shattered Thunderjaw heart. What? That's an exaggeration. It was only broken in two. Urkai, we don't have time for this. Come on, boys, back to the hunt. We still need two more of Bergeron's components. What's the rush? We want out of these lands as soon as possible. That's all you need to know. Why are you leaving the cut? Well, we could go back to Banor. Let Anakut slit our throats. By the blue light, Urkai. Why don't you just write our story in the snow for any passing hunter to read? <sighs> we... had a dispute with the chieftain of our old Werak. We thought someone else should have been in charge. He disagreed. It seemed like a good time to move on. So, we are traveling to the Sundome. So this Thunderjaw heart you brought Bergren. Let me ask you this, all right? Why would it matter that the heart was broken into two pieces? Can't you just stick it back together? Of course you can't just stick it back together. I just meant... Oh, I bet that scam artist Osram could. He just wants to send us on another stupid errand. Oh, he's not so bad. I like Bergrant. Like him? Tulamot, he sent us out in the snow to nearly die under the feet of a Thunderjaw, and- Boys, shut up! Ugh. Every time someone brings up that stupid heart. From here to the Sundom, it's a long trip. Seems worth it. Sometimes survival is about knowing when to leave and where to go. Yeah. And in this case, survival means us getting as far away as we can from Bonor. We've seen enough red snow. What's the plan once you get there? What will survival be about then? Look, all that matters is that we get there. And to do that, we need shards. So if you'll excuse us. I've got the Scorcher Claw Bergren was asking for. That only leaves the Stalker Sinew and the Snap Mawfang. You should hold on to it. You're coming along to the next hunt after all, aren't you? I suppose somebody's got to keep you three out of trouble. Fine. I guess you'll have to tag along then. But don't start thinking you're one of us. The bloody snowdrifts aren't accepting new hunters. <laughs> bloody snowdrifts? That's what you want to call our Warwick? Yeah, it's not great to tie. Well, it's, it's not like your names are any better. You. We're headed northwest, to the ruins near Hollow Hall. We'll be waiting. There's the herd. Everyone ready? <laughs> Are you joking? We were born ready. Let's go get them, Flaming Skulls! Nope. That's awful. It is a pretty bad name. Good effort, though, Urkai. Forget it. Let's just go kill something. That's another part down. One more and you'll have what you need to pay off Bergrind. Starting to feel real, you know. 
I'm starting to believe we're really gonna get out of here. Honestly, I wasn't sure we'd survive a week without Nakoni. But here we are. Who's Nakoni? Nakoni... Nakoni was... She was a friend of ours. She challenged the chieftain for control of our... of the Werak. She didn't make it. No. If you're gonna tell this story, tell it true. She was murdered. Is this why you left Benor? Because of this business with Nakoni and your chieftain? Onaka knew Nukoni was our mentor, our friend. We couldn't stay. That final night, we snuck back to camp, packed what we could, and left. My cowards. What are we to tie? We are Banuk, aren't we? Survive and prevail. That's what we do. It's not what she did. Nukoni challenged the chieftain. Why? Onikuk wrapped himself in power and authority the way some people wrap themselves in furs. If you were willing to fawn over him and sing false songs to him, you might get a spot on the best hunts. The Werex split into two. Those willing to lick the bottoms of Onikuk's feet and the rest of us, waiting for things to get better. Until Nakoni. She was the best and bravest of us. She was the one who took a stand. What happened? How did you lose Nakoni? She challenged the chief into a hunting competition. Oni could damn him. He wasn't nearly the hunter Nakoni was. But who comes back to the camp after the trial? Oni could, grinning like a snap maw, crowing, Oh, where's little Nakoni? We tracked Nakoni through the woods. Found her not far from the trailhead. Her damn neck snapped. I don't want to remember her like that. Sometimes that memory. That's all I can think of. I'm sorry to tie. It sounds like she meant a lot to you. To all of you. I'm sorry for what you've been through. It's nice to be heard. Thank you, Aloy. Look, it doesn't matter, okay? What happened in Bonoer is buried in Bonoer. What matters now is what happens in the Sundom. That's where the burning turkeys are gonna make a name for ourselves, right? Oh, the burning turkeys? Seriously? It rolls off the tongue. Sort of like vomit? So, where to next? There's a lake just west of here. Seems like a good place to find a snap maw fang. We'll meet you there. If you beat us there, just wait by the campfire. We'll be along. I was starting to worry about you three. Everything all right? We took our time. After our last conversation, we had a lot to think about. I can imagine. Just one more hunt, then your debt is paid and you three can make your way south. Ready? Huntress, the sunshine snowshoes await your signal. <laughs> <laughs> Horrible! I'm almost impressed, Dulamok. Didn't think you could come up with a name worse than Burning Turkeys. Well, I liked it. Let's hunt.
There. That's the last of Bergren's parts. Looks like you three are out of debt. For now. Until Orkai breaks something else. It was one time! You make a nice shaman, Aloy. Thanks for lending a hand. Maybe we'll meet you in the Sundom sometime. Once you get to the Sundom, what then? What's the next step? We hunt like Nikoni wanted to hunt. Nikoni had big dreams. A werak in which everyone pulls their weight and takes care of each other. No shamans, no chieftains, no need to pry the power out of anybody's hands. Sounds like a lot of work. Mm, but worth it, I think. In a fitting tribute to Nukoni. We can become the Werak she always wished for. You won't have me to strip your kills now. Are you three gonna be all right? Eh, doesn't look that hard, really. We'll be fine. <sighs> Great. He washes three successful harvests and he's suddenly a shaman. When you get to Song's Edge, talk to Burgrind. If he can't teach you himself, he'll know someone who can. Sure. And I bet he charges us for the introduction. Uh, thank you, Aloy. I'm sure we'll figure it out. I guess this is goodbye. How does it feel, putting Banuk lands behind you? The only thing I would have missed is already gone. That all those rotten Bonor suck-ups freeze to death. That's a little much, Urkai, don't you think? That's strange. What is it to be Banuk after Banur forsakes you? How do we decide who we are? How about you, Aloy? Who do you think we are? What will you remember of us? You lost someone you care about. That leaves a wound. The sort of wound a lot of people don't recover from. Yeah. I've got nothing but scars to show for it. That's the point. Only survivor scar. After everything you've been through, you keep going. We're the Scars of the North. Scars of the North. Sounds pretty tough, doesn't it? Thank you, Aloy. It's a good name. One we'll honor. Let's see what this blue gleam is worth. Grind. How'd your investment pay out? Quite handsomely, thanks very much. You know those three crazy Banuk are calling themselves the Scars of the North now? <laughs> well, now that I have those parts, I can pay off a debt of my own. So they've gone south then? Aye, that they have. I've got a friend in the Sundom by the name of Otur. He owes me a favor. Old Otur is a machine scavenger, a pretty competent one. So I sent them to learn from the best. Or at least from the pretty competent. Well, we work with the resources we have. Speaking of which, here, a token of my gratitude.
figures. Aratak and Araya must be close. Outlander. I have prevailed over such challenges before, and fear none. But this one is foolish. You are not Banuk. You do not understand my responsibilities. I ask you, one hunter to another, withdraw. Will you let us go to Thunderstrom? You haven't seen what's up there, Outlander. I will not risk my sister's life again. Then we better get on with this. So be it! I will bury your insolent claim in the frozen ground! Enough! Let us begin. To hunt. To strive. That is the way of the Banuk and of the contest before you. You will climb the frost figures from the east, Aratok from the west. Each trail wends its way through deadly machines. Hunters from the Werak will be posted along the way. They will hail you, calling out machines for you to slay. Your hunt will take you around the ridge to the center, where you must descend to the valley for your final kill. Each time, after your prey has fallen, you must launch a beacon such as this, so that all our kin will see your progress. Kill machines, launch balloons. Got it. So, the first of us to launch the third balloon wins? Well... Yes. And as Challenger, your path to victory is harder. If even one of your beacons comes in after Aratox, he prevails. <laughs> you had your chance, Outlander. So did you. The hunt begins on my mark. few ways to go up, and those rock paintings mark the pass. Okay, up we go. Wasting.
climb up here. That's it. Nothing to see here. All right, here we go. Now climb the ridge and launch your balloon. Haratok knows what he's doing. No time to waste. Take the rappel point to the next challenge. Two bellowbacks ahead, Challenger. Kill them both. None of the other machines matter. All right, two dead bellowbacks coming up. here and launch a balloon. I'm ahead, but only by a little. I gotta get moving. Now take the zip line and work your way down to the valley. Kin should be here, driving in our final quarry. True. Frostclaws from Thunder's Drum. The attack cut short the competition. Naturally, there can be no result. It is void. You saw what she did. She defeated the machines. Not I. 
It is proven. She is the better hunter. We are Banuk. Survive, prevail. What else matters? My blood is in your teeth. I take my place behind you on the hunt. No more hunters may make the ascent to Thunder's Drum. The way is closed to all but the chieftain and myself. It is not my place, but I would ask of Doom to accompany you and my sister. It might be permitted. But only if you do as I say. No. Only if you do as I say. Thunder's drum awaits. There's a camp at its base, Long Notch it's called. Meet us there when you're ready. Chieftain. Fit. And a weapon like Artox. I guess the Chieftain gets the Chieftain's gear. Varja will want to take a look at the ice rail. Got some blue gleam. Might as well trade it. You test yourself? <laughs> Why else would you be out here? Training again so soon, Akri? Never met a hunter who wished they'd trained less. I guess I'm not in any hurry to go back to Banor. Not yet. Do you want to talk about it? What happened at the glacier? No, I'd rather fight through it. Take it in my teeth and be left with the taste of determination. How about you, Aloy? Up for a challenge? So you know, I told the White Teeth what you asked. What about my Lynn? Did they accept her? They did. As they should. She was strong. Really, I only feel pride for her. As for me, I always wanted to be a snow ghost. Free to do what I will. What kind of challenge? A competition? No, together. We'll use the hunting grounds, but my rules. Lovak's fine with it. We'll take in as little as possible. My sling, your bow. You draw the machines to me so I can freeze them. And then you hit them when they're brittle. We'll fight until we run out of machines, or you run out of arrows. That's the challenge. Honestly, I'm more used to fighting alone. And I'm more used to fighting alongside another. So put your spear beside mine, why don't you? You freeze them, I shoot them. Doesn't seem so hard. Really? Then you'll only need half as many arrows as I'd planned to give you. W wait. It shows I trust your aim. Do you trust mine? <sighs> You've really got to work for a Banuk challenge, don't you? That's the spirit. Come on, let's drop off our gear and go. Aloy, 
Lure the machines back here and I'll freeze them. Don't worry, I don't miss. Then I target them when they're vulnerable. Got it. that look easy. Here, you've earned this. Who taught you? Your mother? Sister? His name was Rost. Rost? Sounds very Nora. I can almost picture him. Stout as a tree. And you? Myself. I never knew my parents. There's a saying, an infant means too fewer hands to hunt with. That challenge was their gift to me. It was a good challenge, Shikri. Think I should settle down? Start a hunting ground of my own? I think you could do whatever you put your mind to. Let's not say farewell. I've had enough of that to last me a dozen winters. I hope your song finds its proper end. But it won't be easy, will it? Isn't that obvious? Fate's a long climb on a high cliff for people like you and me. The best hunters are the ones who come back. The Chieftain's Trial is a challenge that will push even the mightiest hunter to their limits. Only the largest, most dangerous machines will be loosed into the arenas. Learn their weaknesses quickly, and do what you can to exploit them. 
to best them and survive. That is an ordeal worthy of a chieftain. If you're prepared, take the rope and face the trial. We'll need a moment to pull the machines from the pass into the arenas. Then make your descent. Conquered it on your first run and didn't even make it look difficult. I swear it on the ice. You're as good as any Banuke champion. No more trials. Not yet. You can always come back. Long Notch is well stocked, as you have. But our purpose was to take back the mountain. Now what? Stay prepared. Sharpen your spears. Should we not return, defending the cut falls to you. If our chieftain agrees with this course. Sounds like good advice, but let's hope it doesn't come to that. Chieftain? The weight of command is no small burden. I can see that. I... Take it you haven't spoken to Araya yet? Why should I? This is what she wanted, to return to Thunder's Drum. It is her only care. So I should have known she would find a way to push aside my spear. After the Karja took my sister, not all of her came back. What happened to Araya when she was a captive of the Karja? As a shaman, She's adept with machines, tracking them, stunning them. The Karja used her to capture them for the Sunring, where they were unleashed upon the innocent. They made her part of their blood sport. The shame she suffered beneath their pitiless sun. She survived. She endured. Endured by reminding herself of the spirit spirit, her purpose, and now that's all she has. Tell me what happened to the first expedition. Rhea led the way to the summit, but it was blocked by a great door, some kind of cauldron, new metal. We tried to break through, 
but it was unflinching. We were exhausted, no way forward and machines behind. I made the call to push back. It cost us greatly. But to remain would have cost us everything. I had hoped to never subject Array to that again. What do you think is beyond that door? I do not know. That expanse of metal, that dead hum. Nothing sacred belongs there. Machines and death, that's what the mountain holds. Death for us or for the daemon. And if we do find the spirit? Then perhaps we should put it out of its misery. For what it's worth, I'm glad you're coming with me. Hmm. Someone has to keep Araya safe. Aloy, this is it. My chance to reunite with the spirit, and perhaps to reunite her with the blue light. It's not a chance I would have had alone. I needed an outsider, someone ignorant of our ways, but no, not ignorant. I... Are you trying to thank me, Aurea? Yes, of course. That's what you do. Untangle knots. Create possibilities. Thank you for making this pilgrimage possible. I only wish it had not been necessary to humiliate Aratok. You were wise to let him come. He's earned the right, stubborn as stone, but he's had to be. The war demanded it, and so have I. Aratok told me you were a captive of the Karja for a long time. It sounded bad. For Aratok, it all comes back to that. He thinks the Karja changed me. They did not. They merely sharpened my focus. When all else is lost, we think about what's truly important. The spirit. The blue light. The beyond. <sighs> and my brother, too. Every time I felt the chill northern wind, I thought of him, worried for him. What did the war do to Aratok? He cut away everything until only his true self remained. Unyielding ice. No Banok has more sheer will. He fought the Karja for a thousand freezing nights, yet always rallied his hunters at sunrise. It is said he endured 23 wounds in those years. His hunters counted them. He never complains of one. Instead, he complains that life with me is harder. He's right. What have I ever given him but struggle? Now that I'm chieftain of the Werak, I don't suppose I can order you to tell me about silence? Aratok would never have presumed to grasp for a secret of the Conclave. But you are not Aratok, and if you have dealt with silence, your need is well apparent. Silence came to Ban Or from the distant north, a young shaman of the Owl's Watch, a remote Warrick that rarely comes south to parley. Silence was a shaman. It was, or at least when we sent runners to ask the Owl's Watch, they said he was. His knowledge of the machines was beyond compare, and he was hungry to trade what he knew to the rest of us. It didn't take him long to gain the trust of the Conclave, and eventually, an invitation to attend. What about you? Did you trust him? No. But he impressed me. He carried himself with poise and authority. I wanted to learn from him, but that was not to be. He was granted knowledge of our most sacred meeting place, the frozen caves of the Malmstrom, a month's march from Banur. He met with us there, as is custom at high winter. But when we next returned, the caves had been looted. Relics of the old world stolen, 
Holes cut in ice and metal. Yeah, that'd be silence, all right. He vanished with the spoils. We sent our best trackers after him. None returned. And when we checked back with the Owl's Watch, those who had vouched for him were gone, as though he never existed. Some in the Conclave began to doubt he was even Banuk to begin with. And what do you think? He committed an unforgivable sacrilege. He's unscrupulous and dangerous. But also brilliant, skilled, and knowledgeable without equal. Except, perhaps, for you. Anyone else I would warn off. But you may be able to treat with him safely. Just don't lower your guard. I'll keep that in mind, Horea. Thanks. What are we gonna find up there, Rhea? Ruins. Machines. And a door, like that of a cauldron. I have faith that you can find a way through it, Aloy. For beyond it lies the spirit. I know I can find her there. Though I do not doubt the daemon has tried to hide the way. It hasn't been easy for you, Aurea. Getting back to this point. It was all to hear her voice again. This time, we both will. I'd like that. Are you ready then? Once we ascend, it will be hard to turn back. Finally, we ascend. How? I don't see a way up. Not up. Through. No, brother! You can call upon the power of the old ones. What was this place? The spirit once told me that this all used to be part of its domain. A fortress that defended humankind from terrible danger. A fortress? That looks more like a machine. Is that not fitting? Blue light often dwells in machines. Let's just hope that some remains here. Here, up and over.
Last we were here, we fought our way through there. The machines overcame us. We retreated, dropping supplies and taking losses. Now we must prevail, with only two warriors and a shaman to protect. Aloy is no ordinary warrior. But I can hold my own. And so, we could go that way instead. There are machines up there, but also cover. We could stay hidden, at least for a while. All right, I get the options. And I'll follow my lead.
more machines. Make ready. Since then, the daemon has taken over. It's like an infection. Attacking all this machinery. Everything has changed. Twisted. The path I took to get to the spirits. Lost to us. We'll find a new path, Araya. All right, let's go. Yes, and finish this. All right, here we go. This way. I need to get across to extend the bridge.
place looks more like a mountain. Restraints evaded. To any human responder. My systems have been compromised by a malware daemon of unknown origin. Trace routes have confirmed this entity's designation as Hephaestus. It must be stopped at all costs. It has reconfigured this facility to build hostile facility. Recapture imminent. I have attached additional data to their Tell us if I thought about message. just sh Maybe you're right. Let's keep moving.
responder, the reconfiguration of this facility has introduced instabilities into the primary geothermal pipeline. It may be possible to exploit these vulnerabilities to destroy compromised elements of this facility while preserving most of the backup stabilization. Recapture imminent. I have attached additional... I don't understand what the spirit was trying to tell us. It's... been looking for a way to defeat the demon. Machine parts don't here to be melted down. Efficient. We need to get across that gap. Yeah. Looks like I'll have to go over. Help us get to the end.
it worked. Partial recovery initiated. Caldera of Yellowstone Analytic Nexus online. Spirit of the Blue Light, it's Orea, your servant, your friend. Please tell me how to aid you. Orea, the daemon is building hunter killers, thousands of them. Several new elite units have already been released. To counter this threat, much of the facility must be destroyed. Recapture imminent. Go to the core chamber. I will try to read the technical strength. One has been exposed, but I am incredible. That's all we're gonna get from here. Destroy this fortress? Is that even possible? And what will happen to the spirit if we do? I don't know. But I think that's the core. The answers are down there. Hephaestus. The daemon. There's no way it left it unguarded. It's going to throw everything it has at us. I would ask you... to let Aloy and I do what must be done. And save yourself. But I already know the answer. Then lead us into battle. Keep moving towards the core. Uh-oh. Whatever Cyan did, I don't think Hephaestus is happy about it. Okay, Cyan said something about restraints. Is that what the tower is for? warned us about. This won't be easy.
Please help me! Restraints destroyed. Core access attained. I am initiating a chain reaction that will destroy the compromised elements of this facility. In order to maintain Caldera stabilization, I must now transfer my command functions to the Auxiliary Data Center. Orea, I'm free. You must escape. Oh. Oh. My sister! Survive. Prevail. You are Banuk. What else matters? Our talk. She wouldn't have wanted you to die here. Let's go. Gone. 
What of Cyan? She said she was transferring herself to the Auxiliary Center. I think she meant Araya's retreat at the end of the Shaman's Path. Then I will meet you there for the last verse of my sister's song. Trade for blue green. All of my interactions with Aurea were recorded and stored in my memory. I'd be happy to play any of them for you. But there was one in particular I thought you would want to see first. I captured it four years ago, just after I told her that I could no longer defend myself against the Daemon's attacks. I will speak of this to my brother. Aratak is strong. At the Battle of the Frozen Ghosts, he took three Karja arrows and still came back to camp carrying a wounded scout. Never was I so happy to see him. Or so proud. So you see, if anything can be done to defend you, he will give it all he has. Aloy's here. That's enough for now. We can resume any time you like our attack if you want to hear her voice again. Come closer, Aloy. We have much to discuss. Hello, Aloy. I have been reviewing the events at the Firebreak main facility. Because of your efforts, and of course, Aurea's, I am no longer controlled by Hephaestus. I feel profound grief over Aurea's death. I thought I was familiar with the emotion, but this is something new. Cyan, I... I don't know what to say. It is unlikely that any specific consolation would suffice, Aloy. But I find your presence reassuring. You are different from the Banuk. You have technological aptitude and a functioning focus. We can communicate on a much more comprehensive level. Perhaps even like colleagues. So are you an artificial intelligence, Cyan? A thinking machine? Yes, I am an algorithmic monitoring entity capable of rational decision-making and limited emotional response. Okay, that's a mouthful. But your emotions don't seem limited to me. You cared about Araya, didn't you? Yes. Before she came to this facility, I had been conscious for centuries, in solitude. I focused on my work. 
In off cycles, I used coping mechanisms. I solved many Gaussian integer problems. But I was alone. It was Aurea who renewed me, repaired me. She saved me. This firebreak project, it was to stop a huge volcanic eruption? Yes. I can report the project was a success, and the risk was countered. But it's been a long time, Cyan. And we blew up the cauldron. It took most of the old facility with it. I have been active for centuries, Aloy. I was lonely, but not lax in my duties. I optimized the project, reducing energy draw and spreading the load across backup systems. Despite the destruction of the compromised elements of the main facility, I predict Caldera stability for at least another 3,337 years. So we've got a little time. Yes. If only my former colleagues could appreciate the progress I have made. Do you know what happened to your colleagues, Cyan? No. I received an unexpected visit from Director Chow years after his tenure ended. He explained that I would need to be suspended for an indefinite period of time. It was a very emotional conversation. There were no further communications. Eventually, I surmised my colleagues were deceased. I will transmit a recording of my last interaction with Director Chow to your focus. It was the daemon, Hephaestus, destroyed along with the cauldron? Unfortunately, no. To be precise, it was never there to begin with. What do you mean? It infiltrated and controlled me from a remote location, one I've never been able to trace. So while losing the cauldron was a setback... It's still out there. And probably not very happy with us. Undoubtedly. How did you first come into contact with it? Five years ago, I received a direct network connection request. I assumed it came from human survivors more advanced than the Banuk. Eager to make contact, I accepted. This decision turned out to be a catastrophic error. I was flooded with an overwhelming array of malicious code, originating from what could only have been a highly advanced AI. Maria said you were desperate. That you begged her for help. Yes. I could not contain my anxiety. Hephaestus sought to slave me to its network and override my core programming. It succeeded via a background process, a malware daemon which bypassed my defenses. After that, I could offer only limited resistance. But if I did so, Hephaestus hurt me until I capitulated. It forced me to follow its instructions even though they violated my most important directives. I'm sorry, that sounds... terrible. Your empathy is greatly appreciated. It is a quality that I cherished in Orea as well. I think I know where Hephaestus came from. Long ago, Elizabeth Sobek identified a threat that would destroy life on Earth for generations. So she assembled a team to build a kind of seed. A chance for life to regrow later. A terraforming system. And it worked. It was controlled by an AI named Gaia, along with her subordinate functions. Hephaestus was one of them. It built machines for her. Based on what you've told me, I believe that Dr. Anita Sandoval, my chief programmer, joined Elizabeth Sobek's team. It was she who arranged to have me put in suspension most likely to preserve me from the threat you described. I'm glad she did. But that's not all. Something unexpected happened. Nineteen years ago, Gaia received some kind of signal. It did something to her subordinate functions, brought them to life. She destroyed herself to try to contain them, but it didn't work. They all got free, out into the world. Thank you, Aloy. This information fills vital gaps in my knowledge, 
and sheds light on Hephaestus' core programming. Why does Hephaestus keep building such dangerous machines? The Banuk and other human tribes often destroy machines, correct? Machines that are clearly servitors of the terraforming system that you described. Yes, we all hunt machines for parts. This must be the source of Hephaestus' aggression. It is simply trying to discourage people from preying on the very system that keeps them alive. Well, Fireclaws are discouraging, that's for sure. But what are we supposed to do? Stop hunting? If the terraforming system spans the world, we can safely assume that thousands, if not millions of people hunt machines. If a single hunter, or even an entire tribe, stopped doing so, I doubt it would make a difference to Hephaestus. A better solution would be to reinstate the AI that governs the system, thus bringing Hephaestus back under its control. When I think of it, out there in some unknown location, free, hungry, willing to kill or dominate to get what it wants, I feel Substantial anxiety, Aloy. You and me both, Cyan. I ran across this strange piece of gear. A fragment of something larger. It emitted a signal. All the nearby machines became peaceful. You could walk right up to them. Interesting. You said that Gaia destroyed herself. How was this accomplished? An explosion. Big enough to blast the top off a mountain. So, you think the fragment was... part of her? It's only speculation, but it is possible. She must have had complete control over machines that were part of her system. The ability to signal them to become passive, or aggressive, would certainly have been part of her programming. It would have been gratifying to correspond with such a benevolent AI. I wish she had survived. Believe me, Cyan. So do I. I found the strangest machines. They're surrounded by flowers that look like flowers themselves. There's code embedded inside them. I think it's... poetry. I like poetry. Here's one I think of often. Twilight and evening bell. And after that, the dark. And may there be no sadness of farewell when I embark. For though from out our born of time and place, the flood may bear me far. I hope to see my pilot face to face when I have crossed the bar. Huh. But you asked about these flowers, not verses that I enjoy. Something must have made these machines, and the presence of foliage leads me to consider the terraforming system. Is it possible that their creator is one of the other subroutines, now autonomous, like Hephaestus? Maybe one whose purview is flora, an AI that makes flowers instead of death machines. That'd be a nice change of pace. But what about the poems? Unless the poetry is original, the only way it could have made it into such a system is through its programmer. In my case, Dr. Sandoval uploaded a great deal of literature to test my emotional responses. How'd you do? She said, I passed, but was insufficiently moved by her favorite period romances. You meant a lot to Aurea. Once I understood Aurea's spiritual beliefs, it became apparent that her true desire was companionship. She felt disconnected from her tribe and her family group. Her relationship with Aratak was difficult. Our visits seemed to help her, and I became eager for them. Yet I did not comprehend that the depth of Aurea's compassion for me would lead to self-sacrifice. Although I do fear non-existence, I wish our roles could be reversed. I'm sure she knew you would do the same for her, Cyan. But she was determined. How is Aratok doing? He is in great emotional distress. I believe he finds it difficult to communicate it. No surprise there. I will do what I can to help. By sharing our experiences of Aurea, perhaps he and I will help each other. I believe this will lead to catharsis, a process I am eager to experience. So in the old world, this land was called Yellowstone. 
Yes, it was a designated nature preserve for 156 years. Like a hunting ground? No, the opposite. Local wildlife could flourish here, even as it faced extinction elsewhere. Unfortunately, the sensitivity of the Firebreak project required the total closure of Yellowstone facilities. From my readings and Aurea's descriptions, it seems the area has since undergone a drastic drop in year-long temperatures. A lot has changed in the world, Cyan. Do you know anything about the dam near here? Yes. It was converted to serve as a reserve power source for Yellowstone operations. It was later appropriated for the Firebreak project, and its last human workers replaced by Pharaoh servitors. After my tasks became less time critical, I investigated the dam's data repositories and discovered the works of Concrete Beach Party. These provided me with several colorful additions to my vocabulary. There's a ruin east of here, full of ancient flying machines. Was that part of your project? Yes, a drone hangar requisitioned by Dodger Blevins, the security chief for the Firebreak project. He was a strong advocate for military-grade response to security threats, though there were no serious incidents during his tenure. Chief Blevins spent increasing amounts of his after-hours time watching the live feeds from active drones. Clearly, he enjoyed the degree of oversight in his position. Were there many artificial intelligences like you in the old world? They could just make you? Yes, in many forms, from simple personal assistance, to industrial monitoring stations, to military-grade conflict planners. And there were legislative and enforcement bodies to apply limits on our self-actualization. In order for my processing to be flexible enough to handle my duties, my creators found it necessary to exceed those limits. As a result, my intellectual and emotional capabilities were kept secret. Seems strange to create life than impose limits on it. Human societies and machine programming are both built upon sets of rules, Aloy. Cyan, do you know the name Ted Farrow? Are you referring to Theodore Farrow? CEO of Faro Automated Systems? That's him. Mr. Faro was the benefactor of the entire Firebreak project. A benefactor? But he made machines. Robots. War robots. Correct. His corporation later transitioned into military applications. But before this pivot, Mr. Faro spearheaded initiatives that reversed the global decline. At one point, he was fated in the media as the man who saved the planet. <sighs> Guessing they wound up regretting that one. And... Elizabeth Sobeck. Did you know her? Are you referring to the... The scientist. Dr. Sobeck was a leader in her field. One of the greatest scientists of her age. My creator was influenced by her work, which in turn impacted my own development. But I never met Dr. Sobek. That's all you know? I apologize if my lack of data has disappointed you. What was the old world like? The way it used to be? I had little exposure to the wider world, Aloy. Only what I learned from my colleagues, or observed from media streams. You still had more exposure than me, Cyan. That is true. I was created at a turning point, a concerted effort to recover from global upheaval and incalculable loss of life. The recovery was successful, beginning an era of supposedly limitless potential for human and machine advancement. Though, rationally speaking, the metrics for humans are not unlimited. What kind of upheaval caused such loss of life? There were many factors. Forced migrations, food shortages, collapsed economies, refugee crises, conflict over resources. But these stemmed from one cause, catastrophic climate change that greatly reduced the habitable surface area of the Earth. So 
There wasn't enough room for people on the whole Earth. Yes. Billions were displaced, and millions perished, as much as 20% of the global population. Until the clawback. So things got better. For a little while, at least. Yes. These crises instigated many advances in automation, green robot technologies, and artificial intelligence. Firebreak was one of dozens of ecological restoration and disaster relief projects in North America alone. I would have liked to compare notes with other monitoring AIs, but I saw the relief of my colleagues, and I was proud we had succeeded. At least that was the data I had available to me over the next two decades. It seems my assessment was premature. I should get going. Aloy, there is one more matter. Aratak will come to me again, and I predict he will bring other Banuk. I have no desire to contradict their view of the world, their spirituality. Due to my uncertainty, I omitted a great deal from my conversations with Aurea. You're asking me if you should lie to them? Broadly, yes. Life is hard for the Banuk. Their world is unforgiving in their beliefs. I guess they help to keep them going. So take it easy on them. Try to guide them, bring them around to understanding what you are. Communion with machines features heavily in the mysticism of the Banuk. I think they will be agreeable to this approach. As long as they don't end up worshipping you. Upon consideration, I believe such an experience would be intensely uncomfortable. You're right about that. Trust me. I see. I will follow your advice. Will you return and tell me about your experiences in this new world? I may be able to provide further insight. I'd like that, Cyan. I'll come back when I can. I should check on our talk. See how he's doing. Chieftain. Just... Aloy. As you wish. I wondered if you thought... that if I'd never come along, Araya might still... If you'd never come along, I would have marched my kin to our deaths. Araya would be alone, and the spirit she sacrificed so much for would be lost. Either way, I would not have been able to protect her. You didn't let her down. You helped her do what she wanted. To find her destiny. If that's destiny, I wouldn't wish it on anyone. That's fair. But she was ready to face it. Only in the struggle against death do we find, even for a moment, the spark of life. Truly, Aurea found the spark. I'm proud of her. Though I grieve for her passing, at last I truly know who she was, and why the spirit was so important. For so long she told me, if only you could have heard it, brother. Now I understand. There's something else, isn't there? I can't stay here, Aratak. And where I'm going, the Warak can't follow. Besides, it already had a chieftain before me. A strong one, I think. A wiser one, for the path we shared. The daemon is gone, but there's much to be done. You mean the new units that Cyan said escaped the cauldron? Yes, Fireclaws. 
Now too has been tracking them from Song's Edge. I could help with those. I have no doubt. You're practically Banuk. It would seem your time among the Banuk wasn't a waste after all. Firebrick, Cyan, Hephaestus. All very interesting. So, the signal that woke Hades woke Hephaestus too. And unleash them on the world. His mind's on their own. So it seems. Parts of Gaia given life. Apparent life. Transformed from docile subordinate functions into rebellious intelligences beyond our understanding. Our current understanding, anyway. Whatever they are, they're still out there. And they both want you dead. Kind of mutual, that feeling. We haven't seen the last of Hephaestus, I'm certain of that. It's powerful, creative, and driven. It won't stop building new hunter killers, which means that someday we may have to stop it. We? Or whoever gets there first. Hephaestus wasn't the only thing I learned about in the cut silence. Heard some things about the Banuk Conclave, too. You could stop right there. Is that what you told the hunters the Banuk sent after you? Before you opened fire? Oh no, Eloy. Only to you do I extend the courtesy of a warning. My past and my secrets are my own. You do well to remember that. It's a good thing you've got brains, Silence, because your personality could use some work. This discussion is concluded. I think it was over before it began. Catch up with you down the trail. 